Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about how to create a hot spare on your Synology NAS. Before I go any further, I know there's probably going to be a number of you out there that aren't 100% certain what a hot spare is. A hot spare is when you've got more than one drive in a RAID environment, all you know, ballied together, all there to protect your data in case of one of the drives dying and then you've got a safety net. However, even though you have the safety net in RAID, a lot of the time it's not automatic that the system will commit a repair because in order to do the repair it needs to have a drive that it can utilize for the repair and swap out automatically into the defunct drive and that's what a hot spare is. It's a drive that lives within your NAS or DAS system that only exists to be there if something goes wrong and then the system could automatically install the new drive. Hot spares are particularly trendy when it comes to businesses and I can't believe I used the word trendy there but when it comes to businesses and enterprise users where their data is really mission critical kind of life or death for their clients and indeed their own staff having a hot spare is incredibly beneficial as an extra layer of protection moving forward. So, what I've got in today's uh, video is we've got a Synology NAS here, it's an Intel-based Synology NAS, and it's got three 14TB drives already installed inside the device, but two of them are in a RAID group, they're in a RAID 1 environment, not an SHR, a RAID 1, as you can see, two of these drives here, they're actually 14TB drives, but it does the rounding up with the provisioning and stuff. And we have an extra drive here not being used. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn that drive into a hot spare. But remember, off the bat, that because we're not using SHR here, a lot of the fluid rules of Synology Hybrid RAID do not apply. So do make sure when applying a drive to be a hot spare, that it is at least the same size or bigger to the drives that it may potentially replace. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, and to be perfectly honest, you should have them all matched, but in a pinch, you can sort of get away with non-matching drives, I don't recommend it, um, but we're gonna be using this 14 TB drive here. So what you need to do, first things first, get onto the DSM desktop here, make sure you've physically installed the drive you're gonna be utilizing as your hot spare inside one of the bays. Now, you don't have to power down the device to do this. If you're using a NAS that has got trays, chances are it is hot swappable. What that means is that drives can be interchanged as long as they're not being read or written to or mission critical while the device is on. That's what hot spare means. So go up here to the options menu, Go into the storage manager, and from here, make your way into the hot spare area. The hot spare area here has got nothing in it because we've not aligned our hot spare yet. So at the top, we can go to manage or configure. If we go to the manage tool, we can see the available drives here that can be used as a hot spare. As you can see, you can list by individual NAS and logical NAS drives if you're using things like iSCSI or hybrid mount, but for now, they're not really gonna apply to this scenario. Click the tick next to the drive that you want to use as your hot spare, as you can see here, and then click apply. It will then let you know that that new drive is going to be completely reinitialized and all data will be removed, which is exactly what you want. So click yes. And then the Synology NAS will begin preparing this new drive as a hot spare and it will live in the background. Now, once you've created a hot spare, you can configure it a little bit more. If you've got other drives that you want to add, you can even change the way a repair can take place. As you can see, you can have it so that it automatically triggers to an expansion device if need be, if you've got that kind of setup on your NAS. You can also remove a drive from the hot spare network if you so choose. As you can see, we've now applied our hot spare, but we're gonna do a little bit more than that in this video. I'm now gonna yank one of the drives out of that RAID volume. I'm gonna go for one of the drives inside bays one or two, I believe. In Yeah, bays one or two. I'm gonna rip one of those drives out and you're gonna witness the system kicking in that hot spare to rebuild the RAID for us. So what we're gonna do now is remove this drive to see the hot spare um, take up the slack and do what it's supposed to do. I apologize, I'm just gonna step away from the mic while I do this. I've now removed Bay 2 from the Synology NAS. You're probably going to hear a beep any moment now, although I have muted it in previous videos, so if it doesn't beep, that's probably why. As you can see, that drive has now been removed from the available drive network, and if we go to the storage pool, we can see the repair has instantly 
kicked in. And if we go to the bottom here, we can see that that RAID has now built out of RAID 1 and RAID 4. And as you can see, the system is automatically taking care of our RAID resynchronization. We can see lots of information there in the side, and you can see that it has already installed our hot spare drive into this RAID system. It now simply needs to finish resynchronization of that RAID pool. And that's it. Thanks to a hot spare being on your system, you can now know that if one of your drives fails and your RAID um, um, situ uh, your RAID configuration has given you that safety net for your data, you now don't have to be on site to rebuild that RAID automatically. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it seems a very dull subject, and a lot of you have probably watched this video knowing full well what a hot spare is and how to do it. But it's always useful to see the things happening in practice rather than you experiment with your own data first time. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.